Hello? Hey, thank you for coming. Check. Check, one, two, two, check. Hello, check. And yeah. Thank you all very much for coming. This is Metadata Matters. And I'm Dan Korofkin from Source Audio. And to my right is Marina Garza from Tag Team. Um, thank you. We're gonna run this more like a workshop than a panel, so we're gonna do some uh, demonstration. Marina's gonna demonstrate how she tags a piece of music or a few pieces of music. Talk in general about the process of tagging a piece of music. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit more about applying metadata to your site and general search um, operations and how people go about searching and how to um, get your clients to search for your music and find your music in a more efficient manner. So take it away, Marina. Okay, uh, just a little bit my, about myself. Um, I'm the founder of Tag Team Analysis. Uh, we offer a descriptive tagging service that's designed for the production music industry. Um, <clears throat> been doing this for uh, quite a while. And uh, as we know, organizing music can be quite the challenge. Um, and it's a growing problem for some music libraries that have a, a, a really difficult time uh, trying to find the right tracks quickly. Uh, and so any, even now that we have libraries that are digital, uh, some of you may not even know that um, your library may be more disorganized than you actually know. So I'm going to uh, give you some tips, some music tagging tips, and I'm going to offer some keywording guidelines uh, that I've developed over the last eight years. Um, <clears throat> so let's, uh, let's begin. First of all, I just wanted to talk about the common descriptive fields that you would see uh, when you're uh, getting your music ready uh, for sub-publishers or um, getting it set up. If you work with spreadsheets, you will always notice that there are going to be these fields on a spreadsheet. Sometimes they are uh, concatenated and combined uh, in one field, uh, and sometimes there's synonymous verbiage to some of this. So sometimes instead of seeing genre and subgenre, you might see category and subcategory. And in styles, you might see music for or usage as a field. And um, sometimes uh, you will have all of them all combined together. But um, let's move on. All right, so oh, also I wanted to talk about genres. It, it, over the years of tagging, I've realized that it's a really good practice to only put one tag in your genre field. Um, some aggregators will only read one tag. Uh, so it's best to use the best genre um, tag, and then all of the other genres that describe your music would go into the subgenre field. Uh, so I, I've um, separated genres into two, two sections, uh, standard genres that we know from rock, pop, electronic, folk, and jazz that are the general, and then also genres that are specific to the production music industry. Now there's no set standard way of doing this. Everybody does it different, and it's really based on your compositional dominance of your library. But these are some that have come up um, from, from uh, my tagging practices. T TV film, score, orchestral, orchestral hybrid, sound design. These are all can be genres if you happen to have a library that's intense with production music. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna offer you some guidelines on how you can um, organize your library a little bit better internally. And so we're gonna work mainly with just production music and, and production music subgenres. So I'm using score as a genre, um, and these are some subgenres that may fit under there. Cinematic drama, dramedy, trailer, and sound design. And then also below in gray, I put these tags as gray because they're kind of universal. They're kind of flexible. They can be tags that describe cinematic or drama or dramedy. So you can either use those as a genre or a subgenre that actually complements the, the subgenres in blue. Um, I don't usually use them only. I usually use them with um, one of the other subgenres as well. Okay, so we're going to just um, work down a little bit in more detail. This is a, more of a hierarchical um, organization that you might want to use internally in your library. It's, uh, it's pretty much set uh, with the subgenres are in blue and in orange, those are your style tags. And so for under cinematic, we have action, adventure, and horror, which can be, uh, you know, if you, it, I would consider these folders and your subfolders so you can organize your music a little bit better. Um, so I've done it across the board with some of these. Um, it actually helps uh, your organization when you're actually um, 
getting your music together and actually trying to find subfolders to put them in. And you can also use, these are also style tags, and they can be used universally with any of the subgenres. And so here's another look at it in a little bit more detailed fashion. We have subgenres cinematic. And I call these first tier style tags. They're, they're more general, so we're going from general to specific in more of a hierarchical way. So the second tier style tags are a little more descriptive from the first tier. Uh, and so that makes, you know, like action, you can also use chase, battle, and percussive, adventure, discovery, panoramic, fantasy, and horror, sus suspense, danger, and throwing. There's definitely more tags you can add to that, but it's just a really good way of organizing so you can find tags. And if you're manually tagging your music, this is a really great way to keep all of the right tags all in the right place and order so you can tag much quicker. Uh, so that's, you know, and there's also, um, like I was saying before, these, these uh, second tier tags, are, they're, they're flexible, you can use them in, in basically with any subgenre or any of the first tier styles. This is another one, it's just a, the same example, but with dramedy and drama, how you can um, further describe your music and put it in more detail and put it in more subfolders. I'm not gonna go through all of it because it's, it's a lot, but, um, so the next step, and this is also a whole lot of a lot of words here. And but I was, you know, thinking like if you have a library that is a, that's very, you know, cinematic heavy, drama heavy, dramedy, etc. This is another way that you can categorize your music, switch those uh, those subgenres to genres, and then some of those style tags can be subgenres. I'm not going to go through all of this, but I'd like to maybe just do the example of sound, sound design. If you have a sound design library really heavy in sound design, it's really, really good to organize them uh, in more detail regarding your hits, your textures, and your risers. So what types of hits do you have, industrial hits or whoosh hits? Um, and then same with textures, with pulses, and risers with ramps, etc. cetera. Um, and then everything on the gray is, is, is uh, very flexible. You can use any of those tags as a subgenre, as a style. Um, that also uh, describes the genre there. <clears throat> okay, so I wanted to offer some keywording strategies. Uh, if some of you are representing lyrically themed music, pop music, more, more of that, and how to come up with a taxonomy that's based on lyrical themes and also creating a hierarchical organization of lyrical tags, and then always with lyrical themes, you would want to add those into your style field. So what I do is just take the primary, the, the most primal primary tag that represents a lyric, lyrical theme. So these are very basic, love, heartbreak, inspiration, reminiscence. So you can, you can start here as these are your first tiered, and then, like we were doing in the last one, these are all hierarchical. Then we're going to add the hierarchical lyrical tags below. So these are going to describe the type of love that you are listening to on a song. If you're listening at the lyrics, like what kind of love is it? Is it falling in love, or is it attraction, relationship, situation, infatuation? So these are extra tags that you can use. And it's really good to get into the practice of organizing your tags to where you can find things quick. Um, one of my private hells is having to go through a menu of just tags that are all alphabetical and listening for lyrical themes. So this is a, this is a, a really good guide to help you get through the manual tagging. The next step I'm going to do is we're going to talk about how to listen to your music and how to get it categorized in the right places. I just made this little analogy, is a little brown to-go box can, is like an analogy of your music, and not really knowing what's inside there, and then really trying to pick out the best keywords that are gonna fit your music. Um, and so here are some strategies, listening strategies. Uh, I listen for sonority, is the song mostly acoustic, electric, synthetic, or is it a hybrid of those? The rhythm, underlying rhythm and groove is important instrumentation and texture and the development. The development will really establish what type of song is it. Is it a song that fits a standard genre or is it a song that fits a production music genre?
Okay, so I'm going to do a song. I'm going to actually tag a song. This is a song that is, uh, it's, uh, all the music is courtesy of Brew House Music is one of my clients. So I'm going to start with this one and we're going to just talk through it as I play the music. So we're talking about sonority. So if you listen to this song, maybe four measures or eight measures in, you'll just know that it's, it's synthetic. It's 99% synth synthetic. Um, but you know, it also has hip hop, right? So you might be kind of worried, like you might, you might be like saying, okay, should I tag that as hip hop or should I tag it as electronic? And I usually go with the sonority. Since it's so synthetic heavy, I would um, tag it as electronic. So here's a little bit more about the rhythm. So you have eighth note rhythmic builds. You go from double time, and it goes into half time feel. And your instrumentation, you have 808 bass, synth, brass, and snare hits, are all indicative of trap music. So I would definitely have trap as a subgenre. And then as the song further progresses, equally weighted is another um, style that comes up, and it's very energetic. It's got a little bit more different texture. Uh, it's got the wobbly synth. So most of you guys know it's dubstep. So that's really important that you add that as a subgenre as well. Also, I put in gray because it's not something that's the compositional dominant part of the song, but it may be worth mentioning because it's somewhat development. It's a small little um, section of the song that develops. Um, with piano and strings. So you may want to tag piano and strings in there as well and add orchestral hybrid as a subgenre because there's still all that synth happening along with it and it builds into the dub sub So that's that. And this is kind of how it connects, how those uh, rhythms and instrumentations connect to the subgenre. And then from the subgenre, you want to see how it correlates with your style tags. So I would probably use style tags like action, extreme sports, competition, futuristic technology, innovation. It's you know highly synth. You might want to think about using like innovation and technology tags. Okay, the next song. So this one is like. You can already hear it's going to be orchestral. You've got brass and strings. It's dramatic. There's going to be percussion. And it's got this underlying tension to it. So the sonority is going to be somewhat acoustic and it's going to go into a score genre or a production music genre. And then the groove, we have smooth sections that transition into percussive rhythms and builds. Definitely orchestrated instrumentation with strings, percussion, and brass. It's a piano, and the texture's lush. It's bright, it's driving. So I would use cinematic, trailer, and orchestral subgenres that relate to the song or describe it. And then the subgenre itself, and then the styles that correlate. You can use action, adventure, uh, epic, battle, percussive, and tension are all good descriptors for that particular piece. And it's it like this is kind of the way subgenres definitely correlate with styles, but it's also another way of doing hierarchical approaches to tagging your music. I thought, I thought I'd do one that's a little bit more tricky, that's not so easy as to know where it's gonna go. So this one is a, another song that's uh, not as easy to tag, so we'll try this one out. Blackbird singing in the dead of So it's got, obviously, the famous melody from the Beatles, sung by a, a female lead vocalist. But it's not like the actual pop song. It's not at all, de the development is not like the actual pop song. It's more like a production song. So I actually tagged it as, would be a score, and it would be, um, I just went by, what, just, what happened? I must have double tagged. 
tap that. But anyway, it would be um, a score related, and it's um, it's it's a hybrid of both acoustic and synthetic. So there's smooth, expressive piano, and it progresses into. some down-tempo drum grooves. And the instrumentation there, strings, drum kit, female lead vocals, synth textures, all indicative of not just indie pop music, but also trailer and orchestral hybrids. And textures are really important too, because it really describes the shape of the song. And some people really need to know what the texture is. Is it smooth, is it hard, is it gritty? Is it tough? Um, is it gentle? Is it floating? So those are all really good descriptors to use when you're describing your music. And then also here we have the subgenres and the styles. And I wanted to talk about the styles a little bit more because here's a really good example of how I've used some of the regular style tags and also the lyrical themes. Inspira inspiration, empowerment, and freedom are, the, are, are what the lyricless, lyricals, lyrics are talking about. However, the mood is not, you know, fairly optimistic. It's more solemn, it's more somber, pensive, and melancholy. And you really want to use those tags, you want to put those in the moods category, in the moods field, that, that um, relates to the actual music. And the uh, lyrics should be in the styles field that relates to the, the mood of the actual words, which can totally be different. And so just uh, going through my conclusions, we talked about uh, the descriptive fields, uh, genre and subgenre organization, uh, working uh, on hierarchies with your style tags, genre, subgenre, and style strategies for production music, um, lyrical theme organization, and then the key elements uh, when tagging a track. And again, my name is Marina Garza. Uh, we do consultations uh, to for a customized taxonomy if you're looking for a keyword strategy for your particular library. We offer professional music tagging and um, a few things that are up and coming. We are getting really close to starting to tag uh, to, to provide some licensing uh, software uh, for uh, music libraries that are in need of a specific keywording strategy and a platform that's customized for their, for their music. Uh, we're also doing some, uh, we're working with a data scientist and uh, we're doing some machine learning at this point um, so we can um, work with larger volumes of music and in a quicker amount of time it's with still the accuracy and, and uh, the effectiveness of the tags working with the music. So these are things we're working on. If you want to go check out our site, uh, that tagteamanalysis.com, I have some blogs there if you want any advice or some work on keywording strategies or how to use style tags. I have all those up there on my site. Uh, yeah, and so, yeah, thank you so much for coming out. I hope that uh, what I've said has been, um, you know, very valuable or hopefully valuable for you. And uh, I'll be asking questions. I'll be taking questions later, but I'm going to hand off the second half of the, uh, of our presentation to Dan uh, from Source Audio. Thank you. Thank you.